Good afternoon, everyone. This is another one of my videos. This video is going to be all about what we're doing here at SEC in terms of student housing. And we have a guest with us today who's, uh, who's our expert in that area. We have our assistant campus director and dean of students. This is Tony uh, Landenberger. Tony, um, I'm excited to have a chance for you to uh, tell us exactly what's going on at SEC in terms of student housing. As you know, as we all know, this is not a, a normal time for, for anyone. Um, and with housing, we have special sort of precautions and protocols that we're following. And why don't you share a little bit about that and understand you're, you're over both the actress and Milford student housing. So what are we doing here at SEC to make this a, a, an excellent experience for the students while still um, in following appropriate health directives and with appropriate uh, safety procedures in place. Sure, um, and thanks for having me. It's great to be able to um, talk about housing at SEC. We've really worked hard um, in collaboration with our um, public health districts and um, with one another on the campuses to come up with um, a, what we feel is a good plan for students. And we communicated that all out to students in advance. Um, it started with our check-ins, which were last Thursday and Friday, which went really, really well. We um, expanded our check-in time to two full days so that we could stagger our check-ins. That way only one student would be moving into their particular room or suite at any one time. Um, we had temperature checks, limited numbers of guests, um, the COVID questionnaire, all of those things as part of our protocol that day. And that all went really, really smoothly. Everybody was just really excited to be back. Um, so, and we were excited to have them. It's, you know, it's great to have students back on campus again. It's really refreshing and, you know, they're, um, they add so much to the atmosphere. It's just great to see them. You know, on campus in the residence halls, we have implemented a few uh, safety precautions um, in addition to our normal rules and procedures. Some of those are um, consistent with what's happening in the classrooms that in our buildings, they have to wear masks. So when they're in the common spaces, or uh, lounge areas, laundry facilities, they have to wear their mask. They also um, are being provided um, cleaning supplies so that they can clean. They should be wiping down the laundry facilities and things like that when they're done using those things, um, trying to let them um, kind of live as much of a, a normal residence hall existence as they can, but just taking those extra precautions so that um, we can keep our facilities safe and clean. We, we're increasing the custodial cleaning within our common spaces as well, making sure that we have those wiped down and cleaned um, on a frequent daily basis, in addition to what we're asking the students to help us do. Well, one of the things, Tony, that, you know, when you talk about um, a, a, uh, an experience for the students that are in housing, uh, there's another component there, well, several components, but one of the significant components is we we have to have a way to feed these students. And we have a, um, two dining halls, one in Beatrice and one in Milford. And I think the one in Beatrice, of course, was completed last year. What are we doing? How are the students getting access to dining? How, do, how does that work? So far, it's worked pretty smoothly. We have limited the seating within the dining halls to, to social distance to some extent. We've put up some signage and we've um, also kind of defined a family unit for those students that were in the residence halls as being those that live within your suite or your apartment or your room. And we're encouraging students to sit with those individuals or ones that maybe are within their same program of study or on their same athletic team so that they're kind of finding that cohort of people that they would frequently sit with on a routine basis, which will help if we would have to in the future go back and do some contact tracing. As far as um, the dining staff themselves, they're providing um, some ability for students to do takeout meals so they can go pick up their meals and take them back to their rooms if they want to eat or if they don't want to stay within the dining hall. And I think that has worked really, really well. And I think my understanding is we no longer um, have, the students do not have the ability when they're in the dining hall just to go pick up the food. It has to be served. Correct. Due to the state's Right. Through the state's directive health measures, we cannot have a buffet or salad bar type of atmosphere anymore, but we're still able to provide all of those options within our uh, cafeteria. It's just that the, they have hired more staff so that those items then could be served to the students. Um, but all of the options, same options are still available. They're just served versus self-service. 
one, one other thing that I think is real important is we try to have activities for uh, the students. It's probably something you're still working on, creating activities. And it is sort of a unique time, and normally we wouldn't tell students, just stay with your cohort, your program cohort. Don't try to go out and meet new people. And that's not what we would normally do. And we're still not necessarily doing that. We're just saying, if you're going to meet new people, try to do it in a way that's safe. Um, whether that's virtual or you know, outside at a distance and so forth. But are there, are, there, are there things that we're working on to try to continue to create, as you pointed out, that kind of as normal of an experience as possible? Because I agree with you, the students are so excited to be back. They don't mind following these safety and control protocols. They, they just want to be, be back and continue their journeys. Yeah, it has kind of changed our way of thinking a little bit. As you mentioned, typically our mission is to try to get those students out and meeting new people and not just meet um, the ones that they hang out with it on a daily basis within their program or their athletic team. So it's a little bit contrary to that mission to have those cohorts. We still want them to get to know those people and expand without their or expand beyond their smaller circles, but we just have to kind of be creative with how we're doing that. Um, what we've talked about in residence life with our programming, we still want to provide, you know, those weekly programming activities um, every week of the term so students have things to do in the evenings, and that's in collaboration with our student life as well. Um, and in both of those areas, we're just trying to be a little bit more creative and thinking of how we can do multiple smaller group activities versus maybe a large um, one single group activity with everybody in one place at one time. We're trying to use the outdoors, as you mentioned. Um, so this fall, we're doing, you know, outdoor games and things like that, trying to use our outdoor facilities here on campus, um, whether it's disc golf in Milford or sand volleyball in Beatrice. So things like that are things we're trying to do. And then, of course, we'll, we'll start implementing our educational programming things as well, but it'll be more multiple smaller groups. For example, we typically try to have all of our um, residents together in one great big meeting when they come back to kind of welcome them back, have a welcome barbecue, uh, make sure they're aware of all of our um, procedures, that sort of thing. You know, rather than doing that, we had um, our RAs are just working on individual floor meetings um, with each of their residents floor by four. So we just have those smaller groups, um, again, trying to keep light groups together and, and things like that. What, what are there some specific things uh, that you're hearing from students about their experience? Um, I know it's early, we just started on Monday, but. I, I, I've been really, really impressed with our students. They've been overly positive. They're, I think they're just so happy to be back. Um, they are complying with the mask requirements. You know, we might have to do a reminder here and there, but by and large, that has not been an issue. They're adapting to that as their new normal. Um, I've seen students, they're just, they're just happy to be back. They're very positive. It's been a very positive first week of school and, you know, all the way from check-ins to now. And so we just hope to keep that positivity continuing. Good, good. Is there anything else, Tony, that you want to add? You provided some fantastic information, very thorough. Um, very much appreciate that. Is there anything, how long have you been with SEC? I believe this might be my 20th year. Wow. So That's yeah, I started in the business department and then moved into virtual learning and now this particular position. And I guess, you know, the one thing I would say is, you know, we're all happy to have students back and this is a group effort. It, it requires everyone to work together. And so as we work together, I think we can do everything we can to make this environment safe for one another and make sure that we're staying here. And so that's what we're all hoping is our goal. Yeah, I, I, that's a wonderful message, Tony. I mean, we're really, the best way to navigate this thing is to take care of each other. And that's what we're trying to do with our students and, and each other. That's uh, super important. And I think we're doing a really nice job of that. With that, I think we'll, um, we'll um, have some closure here. Any last minute other comment that you have? Um, nope, just thanks for having me. Great. Good talk to you always. I really enjoy uh, the conversation and have a good rest of your day. And let's say bye to the rest of the campus. We'll see everyone later. I'll see ya. Thank you. Bye. Care to you.